pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which is stand one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Maddie Beth. And I'm Nori Kate. Welcome to a lesson in Sistery History. History. Day is always celebrated on November 11th, and I'll tell you why in just a bit. But first, I need to tell you what a veteran is. Nor Kate, do you know? Nope. What's a veteran? A veteran is someone who has served in the military, also known as the armed forces. And Veterans Day is the day where we honor those who have served in the military. Did you know that the military has six parts? also known as branches, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Space Force. Wow, that's a lot of branches. Together, they all serve to defend our freedom, which is kind of a big deal. Respect. Together, all six branches of the military defend our freedom freedom on land, in the sea, in the air, and even in space. So while we are at home, work, or school, the military is defending our freedom all over the world. If you meet a veteran, ask them what branch they served in. And then tell them they're awesome. The reason we celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th, because that is the day that World War I ended in 1918 at 11 o'clock on the 11th day in the 11th month. An armistice was signed to end the war. Wait, what's an armistice? An armistice is an agreement between two opposing sides that ends a war. Oh, well, everyone was so glad that the war was over that the next year, in 1919, the U.S. declared November 11th as Armistice Day to celebrate the ending of the war. It was called Armistice Day every year till 1954. Then Dwight D. Eisenhower changed it from Armistice Day to Veterans Day because he wanted to honor all service members past and present. And that is why we celebrate Veterans Day to honor all service members who have served our country and to defend our freedom. Pretty cool. And that's our lesson on this day in Sistery History. Happy Veterans Day!
welcome to get ready to listen to a group of chorus students sing the song, You Are Our Heroes. It's from a Veterans Day program a few years ago, but it's a song that's very important to me and special. And it's a song that I do every year for our Veterans Day program. And I was kind of sad that I wasn't going to get to do it with a group this year, but I had the idea that I could just teach this song to all of you and then we could still perform it together. So you're going to help me out with the sign language. We use sign language as a way that you can communicate using your hands, your facial expressions, and even your body. Most of the time sign language is used for people who are deaf and are not able to hear well, but sign language is also used in music sometimes because it's extremely powerful and it's a way to show some expression and it's just a different way to interpret the music. So I'll show you some, uh, one part of the song and then you will do it with me. All right, so to begin with, you're going to take your finger. We're singing, uh, we can say, so for we, you're just bringing your hand around in a circle, can say, your finger by your mouth, and then it's your whole hand, thank you. All right, let's try that together. Ready? We can say thank you. Now you're going to switch hands and do the same thing with the other hand. Oh, we can say thank you, and now switch back, thank you. Perfect. All right, the next thing you're going to, or actually, let's, no, we're good. We'll keep going. All right, we know God blesses you. So we have, we know God blesses. Okay, that was a lot, so hold on. We know God, you just bring your hand down in front of your face. For blesses, you start with two fists and then you bring them out and away. Okay, blesses. And then you, you just kind of scoop your finger up. Okay, you. We know God blesses you. Awesome. All right, let's try that from the beginning. Ready? We can say thank you. Here we go. We can say thank you. Switch hands. Oh, we can say thank you. Thank you. Good. Keep going. We know God blesses you. Very nice. All right. So for this next part, your hands are up in front of you like this. For all you did and do, for all you did and do, your hand's going to go around and then right back to where it started. For all you did and do. Okay. For all you did and do. All right. And then I'll show you this next little part because it goes a little faster here. There's a little more you have to do. We see your light shine through. So you're going, we see your light shine through. Okay, let's try all of that. You're almost there. We've almost done the whole chorus. Here we go. We can say thank you. Oh, so chance. We can say thank you. Thank you. We know God blesses you for all you did and do. We see your light shine through. Awesome job, guys. All right, let's try this next part. And we, we have a lot of we's in this, don't we? And we are all blessed. So you're doing this blessed again. Two. And so for two, your fingers are together and then you switch and go to the other side. So, and we are all blessed too. And then to end it, you just say this, you are our heroes. So for heroes, you've got two fingers up, heroes. Okay. You are our heroes. Okay, we're going to try the whole thing. Here we go. You can do this. Ready? We can say thank you. 
Oh, we can say thank you, thank you. We know God blesses you for all you did and do. We see your light shine through and we are all blessed too. You are our heroes. Great job. All right. And then at the very end, we say you are our heroes three times total. And then the very last thing we do is we say thank you. Because, of course, we definitely want to thank our veterans for their service to our country. All right, friends, we're going to get ready to try it with the chorus singing now. So we'll just uh, sit quietly during the verses. And then when it's time for the chorus, it'll be a little faster. But you're going to try to perform it with me. Mr. Swan, what branch of the military did you serve in? I served in the United States Army. What motivated you to join the military? Um, at the time, I was uh, going to school and um, running out of money, and so I knew that would be a good way to get some money and go to school and have it paid for. Tell us a little about your time in boot camp. Uh, in boot camp, uh, my boot camp was at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Uh, I 
went there during the summer. Um, it was pretty hot, but uh, it was actually it was a lot of fun. A lot of people hated it, but uh, I found it after about the second week. I got to thinking that it was a lot of fun, and I pretty much enjoyed it. We did a lot of things that I probably never would have done just on my own. So, what was your primary job after training? Uh, I served with the 122nd Archon out of Birmingham, Alabama. I was a part of a chemical company, an attachment, uh, nuclear biological uh, chemical warfare. So I specialized in chemical warfare. Can you tell us a little bit more about NBC? Uh, yes, the NBC unit, back then uh, they were specialized units that were responsible for, um, say, if a, say if a company got involved in uh, chemical warfare, we would be called in to uh, clean them, clean the equipment, clean the men if we had to. Uh, we used special agents that would wash soldiers down to help protect them. Uh, nowadays, I don't even think they have that those units anymore because each uh, each individual platoon, each individual unit are responsible for their own uh, protection against chemical warfare, which I know it's not supposed to be used today and according to the Geneva Convention and all that, but some people still use it. Um, so. Uh, back then, they just they had certain units that did it. Nowadays, each unit is responsible for their own. So, um, so what we were primarily responsible for washing washing them down, uh, you know, uh, quarantining them, making sure that it doesn't spread, things like that. Which medals are you most honored to have received? Um, I didn't have any combat medals or anything like that, but I did uh, go through airborne training. So I guess my jump wings are probably the most. What I'm most proud of. Tell me about some of the special people that you met. Um, I didn't really meet anyone special that you guys would know. Uh, there was a couple of generals that I got to meet, um, but most, I guess I'm more, I was more interested in meeting veterans. There were a lot of, not a lot, back then there weren't a lot of combat veterans, but there were some that had served in Vietnam, and I always sought those out and got and talked to them about their experiences and stuff like that, but those were the veterans are the more, most interesting people to me that I got to meet. Tell us a funny story that could only happen in the military. A funny story. <laughs> there's several. Uh, there's a lot that I probably could tell kids, but there was one in boot camp when we were getting ready for graduation. Um, we had to uh, march to the ceremonial field, the parade fields that day. Or we were kind of standing in line getting ready for our graduation that day and uh, we're standing at attention and uh, we're all standing there, you know, very solemn, very quiet. And uh, there was a, evidently there was a bumblebee that kind of got in the face of one of the soldiers there and he swatted at it a couple of times. Well, when he did, the sergeant, the platoon sergeant called him and immediately called him out and went over there and kind of jumped on him. And he said, well, sergeant, there was a bumblebee in my face. And the sergeant looked around and said, I don't see a bumblebee. Where's the bumblebee? And he said, well, I don't know where he is now. So the sergeant made him fall out and he had to go over to the field and find the bumblebee that was bothering him. And so when I, out of the corner of my eye, I was watching him and he was out there in this field looking around for a bumblebee. And so there were several of us that started giggling. When we giggled, we got in trouble too. So we had to go help him find the bumblebee. And, uh, and so while we're out there walking around this field looking for a bumblebee, there's these civilians, civilians came and they were going to watch the ceremony. Well, they thought we were really looking for something important. So they fought, they came over there with us and started helping us look. And they were asking, what are y'all looking for? And we were saying, there's a bumblebee. <laughs> and they're like, a bumblebee? And we're like, yes, we're looking for bumblebees. And they said, well, is it a special kind of bumblebee? And we're like, no. <laughs> but we really couldn't talk. So they finally figured out we were in trouble. So they left and went got to the stands. And uh, finally, when it was our time to go on the parade field, uh, our sergeant calls back over. But uh, that was because we weren't supposed to laugh, so we, that made us even laugh more. So stuff like that happens. Did you ever find the bumblebee? Uh, no, we never found the bumblebee. I don't. I mean, I'm sure there was a bumblebee because it happens a lot. You get flies and stuff will get in your face, and you have to be real still. But uh, now after that, we never did find the bumblebee. How does your military experience affect your life today? Uh, my military experience taught me that um, that I, I realized I could withstand a lot more than I thought I could. Um, 
things get tough sometimes, and but you know that you're going to get through it. You know that there's an end to it and uh, that you just got to be patient, keep working hard. Uh, you know, whatever your goal is, keep striving towards it, and eventually you're going to accomplish it. So that's what the military probably taught me more than anything. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. And thank you for your service. You're welcome, very much. God. God.